in the heart of the center of Amsterdam. It's basically double, isn't it? Well, we're in the center. Anyways, how are y'all? Before we go to the next um, gathering, I'm going to grab me some food. All right, some Asian food. Because I was joining a watch party. Now, as y'all know, I love to dance. And the tickets for Summer Dance Forever were sold out completely. So a friend of mine, they came up with an idea to have a watch party, which is actually illegal because we didn't pay for the tickets. But... We had a great time, you know? This was after the whole ordeal. Listen, I enjoyed myself thoroughly. I was not really too happy with the outcome of the competition, but hey, if you love house music competition and you find it very entertaining to watch people dance, Summer Dance Forever is something that you need to watch. So back in the studio, y'all remember the last uh, mistake that I made with the print, the art print? The lining was very um, pixelated. It was really bad, but I received the new ones and I'm literally opening them right now. So this is my first reaction. And I got to tell you, there is no printer in the world that can create that. It, it, there's no, this is done in a professional way. And specifically with that chicle method, I mean, no way that I would have could have a printer that could do that. I would have to pay a lot of euros to do that. But I'm very happy with the result. I'm signing them right now. So they get a number, my name, and also which print, what number of print they are. So this is what you call a chicle print. A chicle art print, <coughs> excuse me. It allows for any illustration, any piece of art to come out really intense. So it is very matte paper. The reason why I choose matte paper is because my, my images are high contrast. As you can see, I use a lot of color. And if I do something with gloss, it's gonna come out in a way that I really don't want it. I want people to see it from any angle that they are sitting. And when you put gloss over it, it will kind of manipulate the light, which will not allow you to really fully enjoy it. I made the background a little bit darker so that the intensity of the colors really can pop out. Behind the feel, which is a digital illustration, I have decided to have a limited edition of 10 pieces. This is the first time one that will go out to someone who already ordered their piece. I have another one over here if somebody else is interested in one or more pieces. I also offer them in different sizes. You can go to my website if you don't find the size that you want. This is one, it's like a 10 by 15 centimeters. So if you don't find the size that you want or you want to have something that's already framed or you just want to be sure on how it looks, any questions that you might have, contact me. I got you. So I'm gonna package this one really safely back into this, into this paper. The paper protects it from smudges, um, dirt, dust or anything else because I want this safely delivered to the person who has ordered their piece. So with this comes a certificate of authentication which basically means you're getting a certificate that says it's a, it's, it's a reproduction of the real thing. So I decided to you know send a WhatsApp to the person who ordered a print and make a picture of it and send it over to her because I was actually really excited about the result and I was like, you know what, this is a perfect moment to show her that they came in and I just wanted to share that moment with her as well. So y'all gonna see how she reacted to it. And it's always like a nervous moment for me because I, of course, like it and I am very picky about certain things. So I will continue until I like something. But the most important part is that the person who is buying your art also enjoys it, enjoys it just as much as you do as the artist. So I enjoy creating it, but it's far more important for me that the person who gets it also enjoys it because I want them to enjoy this for as long as they possibly can. Um, so yeah, so I'm texting her right now, telling her that I received it. Y'all, I'm nervous. You can see it in the, you know, in my face. I'm kind of like tense here. 
I'm looking like, okay, let's see what she's going to say. Listen, even if she would said, would have said like, oh, I don't know, I don't like it or anything, I would ask her and, and just ask her like, you know, what is it that you don't like about it? Is there something I could change? Let's see what we can do. So I would definitely be open to feedback, right? That's important that you're open to feedback if someone does not like it. Because that can happen. And God forbid that hasn't been happening. Let's see what's going to happen. I hope that she likes it. I'm going to wait for her response. Let's wait. Let's wait for the response. God, she's typing. She's typing. I'm not lying when I'm saying it's typing. Oh I'm absolutely stuck. Wait a minute. I need to find a GIF. Yes. I'm gonna make it for her. I'm gonna fix it. Ah, oh, this is so nice. Let me see. Let me put this over here. This is going amazing. And that is all of the business that I got for y'all. See y'all in the next clip or video. So I hope y'all enjoyed the previous uh, part. Again, I'm just gonna repeat it again. If there is something that you like in my store, any of the art prints that I have, just send me an email. If there is a certain size that you want to have, because the print that I created for her is not something that is available on my website, at all i go bigger than that so the biggest that i go is well actually the smallest the smallest that i go is an a4 and from that particular point i'll go further it also depends on the form because some of my paintings are square so i go with the smallest one to the bigger one but if you're interested in that listen you can find my email address here on this particular page yes you can you can contact me so I send my prints anywhere in the world. Well, there are some exceptions, of course, you know, hard to reach um, countries or certain countries that just take a very long time. I'm not going to do that. Um, but most countries are available for shipping. So hook yourself up with a very beautiful bespoke limited edition piece of mine. Continuing with what we are doing right now. We are sketching another piece. And I gotta tell you, this is gonna be a moment where I was like, mm. it started out pretty well, but then somewhere along the way, I don't know what happened. Baby, I don't know what happened. I didn't like it. <laughs> Y'all gonna see the moment. And even though I say this is a sandbox, part of that sandbox is, is that you get to destroy. I've said that before. You can build, you can, um, you can expand it, you can decrease it, and you can also destroy it if you want to. So this is a moment where I just easily say, I'm gonna destroy it, and I'm gonna just start over. Which brings me to the next question of why people are afraid to start over again. Why are y'all so afraid of starting over again? I'm not saying you directly, but could possibly be you. I mean, you very well could be the person who has a fear of starting over. Um, but yeah, why do people have such a fear of starting over with things? Which is pretty understandable if you've put a lot of time, effort and money into it. But if those factors are determining whether you want to start over, yes or no, I'm going to be the bearer of bad news or actually also good news. That ain't it. 
it really doesn't matter if you put a thousand euros into something or you put 10,000 euros or one euro, whether you have put 500 hours, five hours or 30 minutes, five minutes, it really doesn't matter. It is actually part of the creative process to dis destroy things, it really is. We are so indoctrinated, I think, by building things to perfection and building things so that they last forever, which is just one side of the coin. It's just one side of the moon, baby. It's one side of looking at things. I do believe that destruction is just as healthy and just as necessary. Um, I think we see it all around us right now. All paradigms are being demolished, are coming to an end. They are obsolete, they become redundant. Ways of thinking, the way that we do business, um, how big corporations are slowly starting to get a wake up call that they need to serve um, the people instead of grabbing the money constantly. I mean, not everything is due to capitalism, um, but yeah. As you can see here, I didn't like it and I destroyed it and I started over. No matter how many minutes I was already working on it. So I do believe that destruction is just as necessary as creation. And when things are not working for you anymore or something needs to be renewed, it kind of is hard to renew something from a place where it already you know, it already has a spirit, if you know what I'm talking about. It already has a spirit, it has an embodiment, it already is an, an, an entity. And we as creatives and artists also have that right to say, well, this might not be the path that I want to walk on anymore. This might not be the style that I want to do anymore. I might just want to create a whole different direction. But what I'm afraid of is that I de destroy something, I'll never get it back or people might look at me differently, or even worse, I might regret it. I think that is also something that a lot of people in general, but, but, but yeah, artists and creatives specifically can, you know, they, they are confronted with that, the feeling of regret. What if I will regret it? What if this was the best that I can do and now I have to create something else and I get frustrated and this and that and the third? I would like for you to get into a perspective that allows you to be open to possibilities. That when you destroy something, something new can be rebuilt. When you start to fill in the blanks, when you start to fill in the space of what you think will happen after the destruction, that is exactly what's going to happen, right? If you leave room for the soil to be replanted and that it can yield some new crop. That's the best perspective that you can have in things. Even with the amount of hours and money and, and, and blitz waiting tears that you're putting into it, that is part of the process. I think I say it so many times in the videos, you have an ebb and a flow and I know for me, I had to destroy certain beliefs so that I could get new ones in and that would lead to more for myself. One of them was just looking at myself as an artist, but not looking at myself as a whole creative entity, a whole creative and artistic hub. Um, I had to destroy that vision of myself. And I was happy to do that as well. It was kind of sad, but I was happy to do it. And the reason why I was so happy to do it is because I saw the opportunities that could come my way. I knew I had to start over. I knew I had to learn new things, but I saw that as an advantage and not as a disadvantage. I saw ways where I could be more of an, um, of an independent creator instead of having to wait until people throw things in my lap, right? An opportunity to exhibit or a commission. Why not take charge and create yourself into an entity that already creates those things? I see that to be a more viable way of, you know, doing and exploring your artistry 
than just hoping that somebody's going to throw something in your lap because that is just not going to be the way for each and every single artist. Some artists have that luck, which is great, but not all artists have that luck. So you have to find different ways on how to make it work for you. Um, acceptance. Yeah, it's acceptance. I think acceptance is also important when you destroy something. Before you destroy it, you accept that you have done everything that you could do. And you start up. And as you can see right now, you know, I'm a lot more happy with the outcome of it. I like how it's coming out. It's very light. It's really a light sketch, but at the same time, joyful. I wanted to, you know, uh, create a sketch with somebody smiling. So the coming sketches will definitely be people smiling. Um, because I like it when people smile. I do. You genuinely see somebody's joy in that. Um, that is, if, if the laughter is and the smile is, of course, genuine. But that's a whole nother story for a whole nother time. You know? A whole nother story for a whole nother time. So I do think that, you know, destruction is necessary. Don't be so scared of it. Hmm? Let me know in the comment section what it is that you think about it. Did you destroy maybe some beliefs? Maybe you had to go a different route with your own artistry or creativity. Let me know here below. I would love to hear from you. And per usual, get your ass in the gym. Yes, I'm talking to you. Yes, I say it. And I think I, you know, sometimes it's good to remember people like, yes, I do what I say. <laughs> I do what I say. I put my ass into the gym because movement is just really important. It is very important, y'all. You know what the funny thing about this is? When I was doing this exercise, I thought that the handles were a lot lower, but now that I'm looking at the video, they're pretty high. But don't, don't think that this is easy, y'all. This is not easy. I'm a strong lady. But anyway, good reminder, get your ass in the gym, all right? So we're coming to the end of the video. I hope that y'all really enjoyed it. I will see y'all next time in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment, share. Love y'all. Bye-bye.